there are those who say you don't need to go to church to worship God. And they're right. No, you don't. Any of us can turn to God and talk to God at any time at all. We can listen for God's voice too, anytime, any place, anywhere. But there is something special about meeting together with others and blending our voices with theirs. But even more importantly, we actually belong together. God calls us to be together because it is in community that we are challenged and helped, encouraged and provoked. So come, come together and let us worship God. Creator God, giver of all good things, forgive us, we pray, for taking so much of what we enjoy for granted, for each new day and the possibilities that it holds, as well as for each person we encounter and for every experience we have. We give you thanks, everlasting God. When we fail to grasp the chance to do what is right, when we fail to offer friendship or encouragement or help, grant us, we pray, the courage to start again. And with your help, try harder and try to do a bit better. And help us, our Lord Jesus Christ, to say sorry when we hurt others or you and help us to mean it. We bless you, Lord God, for all the blessings that are ours. And we ask that we might bless you in our love for you and for your people. And these things we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
When Jesus had finished praying, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his followers to pray. So Jesus told them, pray in this way. Father, help us to honour your name. Come and set up your kingdom. Give us each day the food we need. Forgive our sins as we forgive everyone who has done wrong to us and keep us from being tempted. Then Jesus went on to say, suppose one of you goes to a friend in the middle of the night and says, let me borrow three loaves of bread. A friend of mine has dropped in and I don't have a thing for him to eat. And suppose your friend answers, don't bother me, the door's bolted, my children and I are in bed, I cannot get up and give you something. He may not get up and give you the bread just because you are his friend, but he will get up and give you as much as you need, simply because you are not ashamed to keep on asking. So I tell you to ask and you will receive, search and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. Everyone who asks will receive and everyone who searches will find and the door will be open for everyone who knocks. Which one of you fathers would give your hungry child a snake if the child asked for a fish? Which one of you would give your child a scorpion if the child asked for an egg? Bad as you are, you still know how to give good gifts to your children. But your heavenly father is even more ready to give the Holy Spirit to anyone who asks. Give us each day the food we need. Sounds different put like that, doesn't it? Give us each day. In other words, day by day. Not a whole week's supply at once. Just give us what we need for today. I'm guessing we're meant to catch echoes in there of what happened many, many years before Jesus came when the children of Israel were wandering in the desert. They were given then bread, manna, they called it, every morning, with the instructions not to collect any more than they needed for that day, or it would spoil. But that's hard for us, isn't it? Human nature seems to want to store in barns and squirrel away just in case. If you doubt that, then just take a walk into your own kitchen and open the cupboard doors. Are there any empty shelves in there? And think, are there things in there that you no longer remember when or where you bought them? Things going out of date too, perhaps. We all do it. Give us each day the food we need. Need, not want. That would be food we need to be able to do the work we do and to stay healthy. I think too many of us have lost that understanding of food as fuel. These days we look on food, the food that we eat, as something we pick and choose from. We take what we want, we turn down what we don't fancy. We have the privilege of having likes and dislikes. We've even turned food into an art form. The best food has to look good on the plate. It has to smell good too, of course, and be full of taste and texture and colour. It's not the same for everyone in every part of the world. The Church of Scotland has a strong connection with a lot of places throughout the world where people have to grow their own food. And if the crops fail, then they have nothing and families starve. The church has connections too with war-torn places. I mean, you've seen pictures of the bakery in Ukraine literally supplying people with their daily bread. A week ago, a friend was over from Lebanon visiting Edelson and we heard her stories of empty shops with even the most basic foods in short supply. Friends in Gaza are having an even more horrendous and challenging time. It's hard to imagine the troubles that they're facing just to get bread to eat. That's the thing about the prayer Jesus taught. That prayer says, give us each day the food we need. Us, 
not just me, but us, wherever we are. We pray these words so often and so lightly. Could it be that God has already provided all the food God's people needs? But instead of everyone taking what they need and sharing out the rest, we hoard and store, and yes, we spoil too, while others struggle. Give us day by day the food we need. Us, you, me, everyone, everywhere. us to pray. When it comes to prayer, Jesus says, the first thing that we should do is we should give God his place. Then we should ask God for what it is we need, both physically in terms of the bread we eat and spiritually, forgiveness, fresh starts, that sort of thing. And we need to do all of that, says Jesus, together. That's it. That is Jesus' model, his template for how we are to pray. Give God his place. Ask God for what you need to keep you healthy in body, mind and spirit and do that together. That last bit is important. Jesus doesn't say, look, when you pray, say my father in heaven. He says instead, whenever you pray, always pray, aware that you're a part of something that is more than simply you alone. So pray saying, give us our daily bread, not give me mine. 
Say, forgive us as we forgive others and ask God to keep everyone from temptation. Don't just think of yourself. Do you think that we might have been overlooking this more community-focused approach to faith? Do you think we've been overemphasizing the personal nature of belief at the, at the expense of the community that we're called to be? It is a thought, isn't it? If we are guilty of over-personalizing things, then we need to understand that that actually changes the whole focus and face of the faith that we hold on to. If faith is purely personal, then it becomes about what I do and I think and I say. It becomes about what faith does for me and sight is lost of what faith can do for humanity as a whole and for the world as a whole. Jesus, when he responded to his friend's request to teach them how to pray, Jesus wanted those friends to understand that they were loved, very much loved, as individuals, most certainly. That Jesus was every bit as keen that his friends should know that they are gods, not in splendid isolation, but as an integral part of God's family. And in a family, it's not just the needs of one person alone that matter. Everyone has to be taken into account. In a family, you need, for example, to learn to give and take and also to take the rough with the smooth. In a family, when one member is down, the others do their best to carry that one. When someone's upset, others provide a shoulder to lean on. Any troubles and family are the ones who rally round to help where they can. And when things are going great, then there are loads to celebrate with. And while there may well be disagreements and fallouts in families from time to time, the old saying is true, blood is thicker than water. It's when you translate these family traits over to the family of faith that you realise how important the together aspect of believing is. It's what leads to our being there for each other, to our carrying one another and looking out for each other and to our not letting anything keep us apart. I'm thinking of friends in Ukraine who so value the continuing prayers of God's people throughout the world for them. I'm thinking of friends in the Middle East who long for us to keep pressing for ways to help people in that part of the world to live in and at peace. I'm thinking of friends in Pakistan, so often under threat because of their faith, who draw great strength from people praying for them and supporting them. And it works the other way too. These people and so many more pray for and root for us in these challenging times we are facing. We are in this together. Jesus' prayer encourages us all to give God God's place. He encourages us to look for God's kingdom to come so that here on earth, God's will might be done as it is in heaven. That prayer also invites us to ask God for all God's people to have enough for this day and to be forgiven, knowing that we too are forgiven. Jesus' prayer longs for us all to be led by God away from temptation, all of us, because that is when God's kingdom will come and the power and the glory will be God's forever and ever. Amen.
creator God, all knowing and seeing and all caring. You made this world to be a beautiful place. We confess, though, that we don't take as much care of it as we ought. Unwittingly and deliberately, we've taken from it without thought for others or for the world itself. Forgive us, we pray, and help us to cherish and care for your creation more. And where that lack of care has consequences for others and for the world, we pray for your wisdom and your help to do better. We think of the diminishing species of flowers and trees, insects, birds and animals. We think of poorer air quality and of the devastating changes to the rhythm of the seasons affecting seed time and harvest. Again, please forgive us for the part we play in the harm caused and remind us that enjoying this world and its many fruits also carries responsibilities. You, Creator God, took the risk of so generously entrusting this world into our care. Help us, we pray, to enjoy it and to protect it. And hear us as we pray for sisters and brothers in every part of the planet. Make us ready to dry tears, to listen, to offer a helping hand, to celebrate together too, and help us to let others do the same for us. Open our hearts and our hands to those in greatest need. Don't let us be content until all have what they need for each day. And to you, our Father in heaven, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, your glory, now and forever. Amen.